Welcome back. As mentioned a few times here on Tim and Sid today, Dave Tippett is the 16th head coach in Edmonton Oilers history. He is joining us right now on the phone. Coach Tippett, congratulations. Welcome to the show. Thanks very much, guys. Appreciate it. Of course. Um, you've, you've coached a lot in this league. You are no rookie, but uh, a Canadian market is, how do you say, unique, Dave? What drew you? <laughs> that's, I think that's the way I described it. <laughs> yeah. Unique. There you go. Yeah. Uh, and that could mean a lot of yeah. things. What drew you to the challenge of a Canadian hockey market? Well, it's just the fans are so passionate. And, uh, you know, I looked at uh, a number of factors here. Obviously, Ken Holland coming aboard and, and just bringing stability to it is a, is a big plus. Uh, some of the young players that they have here, you know, including McDavid and Dreisaitl, but Nugent Hopkins, Nurse, um, you know, Larson. There's some there's some good young players here and some good young players coming in their system. So there's a, there's a lot of upside here. It's uh, I've never had the pleasure of playing for an NHL team in Canada or coaching here before. So I um, thought it was a unique experience to jump in and give it a try. And nice to come home with Gasson. It is. I'm a Western Canada guy, yeah. so I know uh, I know my family's happy to I come back to the Western Canada. So, looking forward to uh, looking forward to spend some time with them also. We talked about it a couple over the uh, a little bit over the last couple of months. How nice it is to walk into a city and a team which most folks think has the best player on planet Earth. What's it like to walk into a job where a team has struggled but has a player like McDavid and, and maybe more over Dreisaitl? Well, it just gives you gives you that extra shot in the arm that you've got uh, some extra pieces to use to your advantage. You know, like everybody's trying to you know trying to win, and you see the two teams in the finals right now. They're solid depth teams. They but having that one or two guys that can be the difference maker in those games could be the difference between winning a playoff series and not winning. Now, we've got to get ourselves in the playoffs here first, but when you have elite talent like that, it just gives you an advantage sometimes over other, that other teams don't have. And that's From a coaching perspective, that's very exciting. <laughs> How important is your relationship with the captain, and have you talked to Connor since you were your named head coach? No, I haven't uh, haven't got around to that. I've actually spent some time with Connor before because I was uh, on the coaching staff of the World Cup team, the under-23 team. So I've spent some time with him before. I know Connor and looking forward to working with him again. Dave, where do you stand on with a talent like Connor McDavid? Uh, when you compare his natural ability to the system you want to run, because defensively, obviously, this organization has had some serious issues, how do you... How do you balance the two with such a unique player? Well, he's a unique player, and the key is the more he can play offense, the better. So if you defend well, quick, you're going to play more time on offense. It's not like Connor isn't. A, he's not a player that cheats the game, but when you come back to your own end, if you check well early, you can turn over the puck and go the other way. I'm a big believer of you've got to spend more time in the offensive zone. And whether that be improving your forecheck to get the puck back or uh, defending less in your own own zone so you spend less time there. Uh, Connor McDavid is from through the neutral zone and the offensive zone is probably the best player in the world right now. Why wouldn't we want to do that as much as we can for him? And that's, uh, that's everybody buying in to check him well on our own end and playing more in the offensive zone. And how important is that, Dave, in terms of Connor? I mean, you need you need buy-in from every angle, obviously. But if you can get that yeah. buy-in from from Connor, that's gonna that's gonna make your life a lot easier, isn't it? Player players want to win, and one of the coaches' responsibility is is to maximize each player and build a structure in which your team is has the biggest chance of winning. So you have to use all those assets. McDavid, Dreisaitl are assets, just like. Uh, Larson on the back end is an asset. You get in a playoff series and he plays, got to play against uh, McKinnon every night, that's going to be an asset. So you use those assets the best ability you have. And, you know, you have role players, you need penalty killers, but your superstars get most of that attention because they can have the biggest impact on the game. So you, as a coach, you'd be crazy not to use your, use your, all your talents as, as best you can and, Sometimes you have guys that can have more of an impact on the game, and that's the case with both Connor and Dreisaitl. 
Coach, you mentioned players wanting to win. Obviously, the fan base wants to win as well. And they've been starving for success after missing the postseason in 12 of the last 13 seasons. Obviously, that's not fair for you to address in any way, shape, or form because you can't wear that in any way, shape, or form. But do you feel the pressure from that fan base to get good quickly? Well, I think it, it's probably a frustrated fan base because they haven't had as much success as they like. But I think you feel the pressure anywhere as a coach in sports. I mean, you you put pressure on yourself to you know to win, and that's what you're hired to do. So, uh, do you feel it extra in in a place like Edmonton? Probably a little bit, and it just bodes from some of the frustration that uh, fans have wanted to be better um, than it's gone the last little while. Mm -hmm. Dave, from afar, and I know Dryside will put up serious numbers last year, but but from afar, there was also a feeling: Can you have Dryside and McDavid on the same line and have the type of success from a depth perspective you now want as a head coach of that team? I'm not asking you for your night one lineup here. You're, you're on your first day, but we're, what is your? Uh, what is, it, de it depends on the depth that you have. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know that that's that's what I mentioned in the press conference today. It's early in the summer. And, uh, you know, Kenny, uh, Kenny knows that there's some changes he wants to make there and add some depth. And um, so it, it really all depends, depends, you know, what you have for depth. You, you, you know, you look at your lineup, and, and as we go through training camp, we'll look at our lineup and what we feel is the best chance for us to win. And if that's McDavid and, and Dreisaitl are playing together, and that's what we'll do, but uh, but there's, we're a long way from between that. I know one thing. I told a story at the at the press conference too, when we were with the, the under 23 North American team. We tried a bunch of different players, kind of with Connor, and we finally got to Matthews, who had never played much wing, but we put Matthews up in the wing, and they just clicked. They were a really good pair to there together. And Drysaitel to me plays a similar game as Matthews. You know, a left shot, uh, plays a real give-and-go game, yeah. can shoot when he gets the opportunity to shoot. So I've watched a bunch of tape of, of you know, of Edmonton play, and uh, certainly uh, McDavid and, and Dreisaitl, when they play together, they do have some chemistry together. But ultimately it will come down to what's best for the team and what's best what we think can help the team win. So obviously you're jumping into the pool. How does it start? Is it lots of texts? Is it lots of conversation? Is it lots of visits to Kelowna? Or is it to Cologne, Germany? I mean, <laughs> what, what, how do you get it going? I, I got to figure out where, where I'm going to. I got a house in Arizona, a place in Seattle. <laughs> I got to get situated somewhere. But um, now my first step, I want to make sure there's three assistant coaches that were here that are still under contract that I want to make sure I uh, talk about their situations with them. I purposely have not gone out and, and looked for anybody else. I thought it was, uh, it's uh, the best thing to do to talk to them first. So that's the first thing on my agenda. There's obviously lots of texts and, and uh, you know, lots of well-wishing, but to, as a part of the job, the first part will be start to get to some of the assistant coaches and just see where they're at with things. Right. Finally, Coach, are, are, you, are you the type of guy who likes to live close to the arena, or do you like the one-hour commute to clear your head before and after a game? <laughs> it depends what city you're living in. Yeah, in Arizona, I have 35 minutes, 35 minutes each way. Um, you know, there's, it all depends what city, yeah. city it is. And I, I haven't even thought about it in Edmonton yet. I, I flew in early this morning. I got a uh, flight canceled last night, so I ended up flying in early this morning. So... It's uh, it's been a bit of a whirlwind, so I'll worry about the the uh, housing facilities maybe next trip. In. <laughs> yeah, probably an unfair question on my part, coach. But uh, forgive me, it is day one, and uh, you got a lot of hockey fans in that market in Edmonton. Excited you're there, uh, Dave. Congrats. It's going to be fun. Thank you. Thanks very much, guys. Appreciate the time.